Hello again, internet friends. In this video, I just wanted to share with you a couple of quick, easy budgeting tips that might give you a little bit of money back into your bank account. All right, let's just jump right into it. The first is to go through your transaction history. Now, whether you do that through your online statements, paper statements, or I've got an app on my phone, which I find really handy, go through about a month or two of all your transactions. Now, there's a few reasons why this is a really good idea. One is to just give yourself a bit of an idea of what you're spending money on. So you might go through your grocery shopping and you might think, oh, we spend, you know, say, I don't know, $200 a week on groceries. But then you realize that you pop down to the store during the week, you know, just to pick up a couple of items and then you pop down again just to get one or two things. And then one night you're craving ice cream, so you pop down and get that. Suddenly you realize, oh, never mind, we're spending $350 on groceries, and I had no idea. This also helps you keep track of expenses that aren't necessary, obviously grocery shopping is. But when I went through our transaction history, um, I was probably about a year ago now, I discovered that my husband was spending about $50 a month on takeaway coffees. Now that, to me, is quite a significant amount of money, and he did not realize he was spending that much. So when I brought it up with him, um, we sort of chatted about how we could um, maybe do more coffees at home in his thermos. And a lot of people just buy takeaway every now and then, um, and they don't actually realize how much it adds up until you actually see it in front of you in writing. So it's really good to go through your transaction history just to get an idea. And if you look at it and go, yeah, I'm spending $50 on takeaway coffee and I'm fine with that, then it's fine, it's no problem. But a lot of the time you see what you're spending and you can be a little bit surprised and you realize that, you know, it's an area that you wouldn't actually feel like you were sacrificing that much if you just bought a thermos and took your coffee to work or whatever um, made from home. So it just helps you see a couple of areas where you can tighten your budget a little bit. Another way this is helpful is to look at different subscriptions that you might have. Some of them you'll definitely be like, yeah, I want to keep that one. Others you might think, oh, I don't actually use that that much and it's, you know, $12 a month. So you might decide, yeah, that's one I can do without. And then you've saved yourself $12 a month. One way this was really handy to us recently was I was going through our transaction history. So I do this probably every three months. I'll just have a look over the last one to two months and get an idea. It doesn't take that long and the benefits are definitely worth it. So my husband had found us a better internet plan and had cancelled our old one. But he forgot to cancel the direct debit that was coming out. So for a couple of months we were paying to an internet provider that we weren't getting any internet from. And that was like $40 a month. Um, thankfully I contacted them and we got some of that money back. But if I hadn't have looked through our transaction history, who knows how long that could have gone on for because it was an automatic repayment and he had just forgotten to cancel it. I think maybe he thought that when he cancelled the plan that it would just automatically cancel the um, direct debit. Another time I did this I found I was being overcharged on one of our subscriptions. I don't know why it was happening but I contacted the company and they refunded my money and since then it's just gone back to the normal amount. Again if I didn't know how much our su subscriptions were supposed to be and I didn't look at how much we were paying, that would be extra money we're paying out that we don't need to. So if you just go over your transaction history, you could be saving yourself money instantly. My second quick tip is always check your receipts. For me, this mostly goes for grocery shopping. Quite often, I'll buy something that says it's on special or it will be on clearance. There have been many, many times it's gone through and for some reason maybe the ticket I was looking at was wrong and it's not on special or sometimes the clearance item gets scanned but you end up paying the original price for it, not the clearance price. And so you think you pick up an item thinking you're saving yourself money and then you get charged the full price for it. So just quickly checking your receipts, making sure you're paying the amount that you think you're paying is really helpful. And that goes for things like clothes shopping as well. Sometimes it'll be like, oh, this particular thing is, you know, two for one or whatever. And then you get to the register and, you know, maybe you've picked up 
the wrong second thing or their prices were old ones that they had left on and it turns out it's not two for one, you end up paying the full price for both. So just little things like that, which leads me to my next point, um, which is to complain. Now, when I say to complain, there's a way you can do it without being super annoying. So in the example of if you purchase clothing and it's two for one, it says it's two for one and it turns out not to be, you can say, oh, you know, the ticket said this and um, can I get it for that price, please? And quite often the stores want to keep you happy, so they'll do that kind of thing for you. So it doesn't hurt to ask. I am probably slightly annoying at my local supermarket because like I said, I always check my receipts. And really, you'd be surprised quite often how they get it wrong. And recently I bought meat and it was on clearance. I think it was like, it wasn't a big clearance. It was like $12 down for 15, but it was a meat that I knew I was gonna use and it was a pretty good price, so I got it. And it got scanned and I checked my receipt and I had been charged the full price for it. So I went to the service desk and like I said, you can do this with out being annoying and being really nice. There were um, some other people waiting to be served and I said, I'll serve them first, this might take a minute. And so, you know, I just waited until it wasn't busy and then I said, oh, I bought this meat and it said it was on clearance and I got charged the full price for it. What they actually do in that situation, because they can't refund you the difference, you end up getting the full amount back, which means my originally $15 meat that I thought I was gonna get for 12, I got for nothing. <laughs> so it's definitely worth complaining. And after they did it, I said, oh, thanks very much. I really appreciate it. But like I said, I'm probably getting a bit annoying because it happened, that kind of thing happens a lot. So probably like maybe twice a month, I'm there at the service desk being like, um, can you fix this up on my receipt, please? <laughs> and that same day, actually, I bought, it was like, I don't know, buy seven kiwi fruits for, you know, three dollars or whatever. Um, and it came through as five kiwi fruits for three dollars. And so I got charged the full amount for the other two kiwi fruits. And you might think, oh my goodness, just let it go. You know, that's a dollar twenty. I could buy some other fruit or vegetables for that. So I don't want to waste that money. Especially if you check your receipt and you're still there in the supermarket. And so I took it to the service desk and you know, they realized while they were refunding my meat, I again got the full refund for all my kiwi fruits, so they were free. So complaining really does work to your benefit and you can do it nicely. Tip number four is if you can invest in a freezer. Now some people might not have the physical space for this, but a freezer you can put outside. I mean, some people might live in a flat and so don't even have that option but if you can invest in a freezer even if it's just a small one having a freezer comes in handy in quite a few ways one is I use it particularly for buying meat because I will buy it when it's on clearance and then you might be getting it for about half the price and you stock up on it and then you might not need to buy meat for the next month and because you're getting it for half the price it's saving you quite a significant amount of money Something that all my children eat is chicken drumsticks. When these are on special, I stock up on them. It's an item that I would otherwise buy sort of every week, every fortnight, but if I get them on a good special, I won't buy them for a month and they're good in the freezer and you just defrost them, cook them as normal. Meat is supposed to last in the freezer for three months. Personally, I push that to about six months and have never found it's a problem. Another thing I use my freezer for is I like to make my children's uh, sort of like muesli bars and little muffins and stuff instead of giving them the snacky stuff you can buy in the supermarket. Two main reasons for that. One is homemade is healthier, or the homemade I make is healthier anyway, and it is also quite a bit cheaper. Now I like to give them different things like throughout the week but so I don't feel like I'm baking every single day I bake a bulk lot and then I freeze it so quite a lot of things like muffins and muesli bars freeze perfectly well I just put pop them in their lunchbox I don't even defrost them I do the lunches the night before so the mornings aren't quite so hectic and overnight they just defrost as they are 
And the third thing that our freezer is really helpful for is I make my husband's lunches and freeze them. A lot of people who are working buy their lunches and that gets very expensive very quickly. If you've seen my last cooking video, my husband gets a nice, good, hearty lunch and I think it worked out to be about $1.40 a serve, something like that. If you're buying from your workplace or a food court or something like that, you'll be paying 10 times that. So you can save a significant amount of money by taking a frozen meal to work. What I do is I make a bulk lot and just freeze a whole heap. It's also generally a lot healthier because takeaway food is not known for its health in general. Now, a second freezer can be a bit expensive. It can be a few hundred dollars, which leads me to my last point to save yourself some money, which is appreciate secondhand stuff. That can be clothing and items from op shops. That can be hand-me-downs from siblings. That can be clothes from friends. Oh my goodness, my son, I have probably only bought him socks and underwear in the last like five years because I have a great friend who um, has a boy that's a few years older and she gives me hand-me-downs. Every now and then I might buy him something special but yeah we we live off secondhand stuff and it's fine. And in terms of his clothes like so my friend gives me stuff it's good quality it's not falling apart and sometimes you wouldn't even know really that it's been worn before so you know he's moved into his next clothing size or whatever and I'm changing his clothes over or it's summer coming into winter so he needs some more long sleeve tops and I'll yeah, fold them up and wrap them in a little present for him and be like I got you a present and he gets to unwrap it and he gets all excited about having new clothes and I always put the ones on top that I think he'll like the most like if it's got a dinosaur or something on it so yes there's nothing wrong with secondhand stuff and you can make it fun and but coming back to the freezer most of you, I imagine, would probably know about this, but it's worth a mention for those who don't. There are sites, um, buy and sell sites, on places like Facebook, and they're sort of like what the trading post was back in the day. And you can go on these sites and you can search for particular items you're looking for, so you can search for your freezer, or you can just browse them and see what there is. There is a bit of a danger in that, though, because sometimes you end up seeing something and being like, whoa, that is really cheap but you don't really need it and so you end up buying it and yeah sure you purchased your daughter a Barbie car for $20 and that was a really good deal but she didn't really need a Barbie car so technically you've lost $20. Not that your kids are really going to complain that they're getting new toys but the point is just be careful when you are browsing them. But yeah if you're looking for a particular item it's good to go on these sites Sometimes you might have to go on them every couple of days for a month before you find the thing that you're looking for. In Facebook type in the name of your town or sort of the region that you're in and then buy and sell or something similar and it will come up with these secondhand sites. So those are just five quick tips to save you a little bit of money. Get onto them and see how much you can save just in the next month. Thanks, see you next time.